Hi. Uh, if you've clicked this video, you're trying to figure out how to set up Dolly Track that you've rented from us, probably. Um, the first thing I want to cover is the order of events that'll happen. Your Dolly Grip, uh, newer experienced either way, is going to come to the DP and find out what the shot is going to be so he can see where the track's going to go and how much track he's going to use for the Dolly shot. Typically, they'll mark where the camera shots will be, and so. Let's say that uh, your director of photography is telling you that he wants to have two people walk up the sidewalk and turn up the driveway and he wants to start centered on the sidewalk looking at the people and then move closer to them and up the driveway with them. So it's a diagonal track. So the end of the shot will probably be somewhere in here. And the beginning of this shot, centered on the sidewalk, will probably start here. So he wants to have them walk towards camera, and then they'll turn and go to the house, and he'll track with them. And then when they pass the edge of the doorway and they're gone, that's the end of the shot. So now that we've marked them, you want to figure out how much track you need. I'm going to have you take the end of this and walk down to the other cone. Okay. Now he's measuring from his cone to my cone, and the problem with that is you have to account for the chassis of the dolly, which is about another four feet behind that. So go a little further and look at that. Whoops, come back. You are. Lay it down on top. Yep. There you go. So that's 24 feet of track to get that shot. And still have chassis on the back side of the camera back here. So that way your dolly grip can push. All right, so the next thing we need to know is what's the highest point in this uneven terrain? Because when you're leveling the track, you can't go any lower with the track than whatever the highest point of ground is going to be. So once you figure out what the highest point is, we'll start from there and bring everything else up to it. The next thing is just a rough layout of the track. Uh, when you're handling the track, Things to be careful of are the ends. And the reason that is, is if you ding the end, you know, so that it's lifted up, when you join the track pieces together, the dinged ends will stick up like that and the wheels will bump right over them, right? And you'll feel that and you'll see it if you have a long shot like we're going to have looking way down the sidewalk. So you don't want to stand the track on hard ground on the end. You want to protect the ends. And then because the track scissors, be careful not to lose fingers. <laughs> Don't beat anybody in the head with it. This has got a lot of metal to it. And then the other part of the track you want to pr protect is the upper half because that's the, the sides the wheels ride on, right? So you want it to be smooth so those, that's the, what you protect, the ends and the tops. <coughs> so if you grab it, you can turn it over and find a balance point, keep one end low. And that way, <coughs> so we'll just go right on across.
we've roughed in the track and what's going to end up happening next is you can kind of step back and just take a look and you can see the high point obviously is right over here. Start with bringing up this corner from here. So with the level on it, uh, grab some wedges over there. And you want to go under this guy. That works. So then we'll go left to right at the head of the track. So basically what happens is I connect the level to the track and then I just lift until I'm where I want to be. And then you come over and fill it in right here. So that's probably a half apple. And we'll try to get it under both, so let me help you with that. Okay, go ahead. And good left to right. Okay, now that we're level left to right, notice we started from the high point, brought the lower pieces up to that same point. So this track is level both left to right and against the slope. So the next thing we do is we hit the next stick. We attach and we'll probably have to bring up the tail end just to be able to attach first. So we'll probably need bigger boxes as we continue out. Half apple and uh, maybe a quarter or a pancake. Quarter and a pancake. And a wedge. Sure. Remember, you want to go long like this. Yeah. And you want to support all the cross ties, and the support needs to be directly under the cross tie, not here and not out here, but right here. Okay, continuing to add. So the full may fit down there. And when you sight down the length of it, it's level left to right as well as up and down, right? And every piece should be supported so that when the dolly tracks, it's not going to rock or bump. If you end up in a situation where the wedges stick out too far on the side, you can actually wedge from the other side or wedge from the edges in a line to prevent any stick outs, right? Because in a lot of situations, when you push dolly, it'll have a push bar and you'll be on the side of it, not trying to step through the track or dodge all your cribbing. You see where I can just go? And that's it. You should be able to get through that relatively quickly if you have all the gear close. It's better if after you rough it out you actually get the wedges and dump them out along the length of the track along with the cribbing so you're not having to make long trips back and forth to your crates. One guy deals with the level and holds the track at the right height. One assists him. The rest of the guys should be doing other things separate from this. When he gets all four points level all the way down, then everybody can help fill if they all understand that process of not jamming it in and changing the level. And there you go. 
get them to help you put the dolly on. <laughs> That's it.